Well, good morning, and welcome to the Coronacast. But it's another lovely morning, and the only thing interfering with it is the noise of the bin lorry on the street behind me. I've been thinking about how the coronavirus reveals something about the power of a shared and single purpose. If we think of that hospital, the Nightingale Hospital in East London, that was built in nine days, because loads of people joined in a single purpose with a single goal. Think about the search for a vaccine where lots of pharmaceutical companies that ordinarily would be competing with each other tooth and nail are now joining together with a single purpose and a single goal. Jesus looked uh, to his disciples to have a single purpose and a single goal. Let me read to you from Matthew chapter 8. When Jesus saw the crowds he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. The teacher of the law came to the lake and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Elsewhere, I think in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus uh, says in this kind of same reporting of the same event, but with slightly different words, no one who puts their hand to the plough and yet turns away is worthy of the work of the kingdom. It's like, well, if you put your hand to the plough, you've got to be ploughing a straight furrow, a straight line. If you're looking left and right, then your line will be bendy, it will be confused, you're not going to plough a straight furrow. Of course, this is hugely challenging because none of us have a single purpose. We all have multiple purposes, we all have multiple concerns. We all want to follow Jesus, but we all want to pay the mortgage uh, or pay the rent. We all want to find a nice place to live. We all want to um, have a nice holiday this summer. We all want to make sure our kids have a good education. We all want to care for our elderly relatives. We all want to uh, do this and that and the other. We all we have lots and lots of different goals and objectives. And what do our furrows look like? Are they straight furrows heading for the kingdom? Or are they bendy and twisting and all over the place? Well, I don't know. I really don't know what to say about Jesus' teaching in this. So I turned to a commentary that I've enjoyed in the past. It's by a guy called Stanley Hauervas. And he uh, reads it like this. I'm just going to read this to you and then pray. Some are beginning to recognise that Jesus is different and they desire to partake of that difference. A scribe comes claiming that he is ready to follow Jesus wherever Jesus might go, but Jesus rebuffs him because Jesus has no place to go. The scribe, as might be expected of a scribe, has identified Jesus as a teacher, but he has not understood that this teacher teaches a wisdom forcing us to abandon what we take to be home. He cannot stay home and follow Jesus. Another disciple approaches Jesus, asking if he might interrupt his journey with Jesus in order to bury his father. Elijah allows Elisha to return to his family before following him, but Jesus demands that this disciple leave his family behind. Follow me and let the dead bury the dead. To be a disciple of Jesus, it seems, requires such dedication, because what Jesus is and does means that normal is reconstituted. This one who would be a disciple of Jesus stands in the presence of life itself, yet remains captured by death, wanting to bury the dead. Jesus, who will die on our behalf, requires those who would follow him not let death determine their relationship with the living. So I guess the truth is that uh, Jesus does expect more clarity, more singleness of purpose from us than often we allow. Lord God, we come to you through your son Jesus and uh, maybe pray a prayer like this. Teacher, teach us what it is to follow Jesus in these times, in this place, with all our concerns and worries and things that distract us. Help us remember that we pray that prayer to the one who says, don't worry over a thing. Don't you know that God is looking after you? Don't you know that God is providing for you? 
and help us approach each day with increasing clarity of purpose all the while moving towards the things that you have called us into we pray these prayers in Jesus name Amen See you later